that, I'll give you Stephen. This is uh, Steve Crabby with the uh, Kansas City Regional Office of Missouri Department of Natural Resources. Um, I'm here to talk about the Our Missouri Waters Initiative. I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself, a little bit about the department, and how we got to this point and uh, and created Our Missouri Waters and um, and what that is and what it means for everybody in the in the region. Uh, first of all, for me, I uh, am from the Kansas City area. I grew up playing in the creeks in the uh, in my neighborhood and watching all the flash flooding go through and finding out how exciting that was. Uh, once I graduated, I went to uh, Northwest Missouri State for a brief period when I was a business major and found out pretty quickly I am not a business type of person. Um, so I came home and had uh, joined the reserves and was deployed to Bosnia. Um, this was right after their civil war and they had lost all their basic infrastructure. So I got to see what it's like when a country loses wastewater treatment and water treatment and have to, uh, people have to walk miles to get clean water. Um, so it kind of gave me an idea of, uh, of the path I wanted to go down. I got back and uh, the uh, best paying job I could find at the time was working at a landfill. And uh, it was pretty fun, but um, so I stayed there for about five years and uh, got a, another taste of, uh, of the, the, the way that we treat our environment. And uh, it was neat while I was there because we went from just putting everything in the landfill to collecting the gas and, and putting that into a pipeline. And, and so there were some, some pretty interesting developments at that time in, in the waste field. So I figured I'd want to learn some more about that. And so I went back to school, went to Longview uh, Community College, got my Associate of Arts, and went on to UMKC and got a Bachelor in uh, Environmental Studies, which is now an Environmental Science degree. And um, then went on to get a Master's in uh, Environmental and urban geosciences, which is a long term for environmental geology. Um, after I got my bachelor's, I started working for the department and uh, held several positions there over the past seven years. I have been a uh, inspector of solid waste facilities, landfills, and uh, transfer stations. I also was a hazardous waste inspector, so a lot of um, uh, companies that uh, and manufacturers that produce hazardous waste. Uh, making sure that they uh, handled that within the, the guidelines of the uh, state and federal laws. And then uh, I did inspections on wastewater treatment facilities and other uh, stormwater facilities. All that led me to where I am now and uh, becoming the watershed coordinator in May of 2014. And I love it. I'm, I'm very happy to be here. Um, so my... Uh, trail, kind of parallel the department's trail. Um, the, the Department of Natural Resources mission is uh, to protect and preserve and enhance Missouri's natural, cultural, and energy resources. Um, I'll tell you how we're going to be doing that or how we have done that. And uh, um, since it is our 40th anniversary, I'm obligated to talk a little bit about the, the history of the department. Uh, we were formed officially 40 years ago by the Omnibus State Reorganization Act of 1974, which um, uh, brought together a lot of state agencies and, and created a couple of new ones. The uh, longest running existing agencies were the uh, State Park System and the Missouri Geological Survey. Uh, this is kind of how things were before the department was formed as far as environmental quality went in some areas. Um, you can see that uh, a lot of fish kills, uh, some things being poured in the water, lots of uh, air pollutants and, uh, and other hazardous waste was just dumped without any controls on it. And since then, we've been able to uh, uh, make a lot of improvements, um, not just because we formed as a department, but also because people became more aware of it. They wanted that to happen and wanted businesses to, uh, to handle these things in a, in a more uh, proper manner. The department is divided into uh, several divisions, and I'm going to talk about just a few of those um, that have the most impact on, on how we look at water in the state. Um, those will be the state parks, the geologic survey, the director's office, and the division of our env environmental quality. They all have their own focus and purpose, um, but they all are related to, to water in some way. There are 87 state parks and historic sites, plus the Roger Pryor 
Pioneer Backcountry, which is great if you like being out in the wilderness with no cell phone reception and just really enjoying nature. Uh, the, uh, the hiking and backpacking there is, is one of my favorite things to do. Um, it's, they, they are an opportunity for outdoor recreation, such as fishing, swimming, camping, trails. Um, this one here is uh, the, uh, the mill at Watkins Mill. And uh, that is uh, one of the, the, the lakes, I believe that's Lake of the Ozark State Park. The Missouri Geologic Survey is, uh, is there to provide technical assistance, education, and guidance uh, in the use and protection of Missouri's natural resources, uh, interpret the state's geologic setting, and the availability of its energy and mineral resources. Um, so basically what they do is uh, uh, quite a few things, really. Um, they ensure that well standards are met, that, that wells are drilled and, and paced properly so that they um, anything that would be going into the well uh, or coming out of the well doesn't affect other groundwater. Um, they also create maps of bedrock and surficial materials for mineral, re mineral resources, geologic hazards like uh, sinkholes and, and karst environments, and then they produce other publications that uh, are educational and um, uh, informational. Um, they also do waste disposal site investigations to ensure that, that, uh, that uh, sanitary landfills are sited in areas that won't affect uh, groundwater or surface water. In the office of the director, there's uh, several programs. Um, the four largest are, that uh, are the Soil and Water Conservation Program. Uh, they have financial incentives uh, um, to help uh, Obviously, with soil and water conservation, that money comes from the soil and or the parks and soils tax. Um, they there is a, a a new environmental education office um, where we're putting together resources for uh, teachers and and other education institutions uh, to be able to use um, as as they need. Uh, we have the Water Resources Center, um, which deals with water quality issues such as water use and availability, uh, water resource monitoring and planning, drought assessment, flood and hydrologic studies, wetland studies and dam safety. Um, and then the Community Services Division, which is also another new uh, initiative, which is to help uh, smaller communities that are having financial uh, may have financial or technical needs um, so that they can ensure that they have a uh, uh, good uh, water delivery and wastewater treatment systems. And then uh, the last one is the Division of Environmental Quality, um, which is the largest division of the Missouri Department of Natural Resources and the one that I work for. It is uh, includes the Environmental Services Division, which has the state lab, for, so all the uh, samples that we test go to the lab and, uh, and, are, and are tested there. And they also have the um, environmental emergency response teams uh, through the environmental services. And they will go if there's a, a, a spill or um, other hazardous material release, they'll go assess the damage and, and do it properly. Um, the solid waste, hazardous waste, air pollution, drinking water, and water pollution uh, programs, all are the regulatory and enforcement uh, divisions that uh, uh, handle those materials. And then reclamation uh, will um, ensure that when an area is, is finished being mined, that it's back into proper use. Uh, finally, in the Division of Environmental Quality, there are five regional offices. I work for the, for the Kansas City Regional Office in Lee Summit. Um, and then you can see the others there in their offices. Um, what we do there is uh, uh, inspections of facilities for all of those uh, programs that I mentioned before, uh, compliance assistance, so facilities that, that might need a, somebody to come out and give them some guidance, uh, um, voluntarily give us a call and say, uh, you know, ask for some sort of assistance. And we also do concern investigations, so if uh, citizen sees something outside uh, uh, like a dump or uh, um, a release of, of uh, 
untreated wastewater or something like that, we investigate those to make sure that they're cleaned up or, or taken care of. Um, with all these focus divisions, programs, and offices, it gets confusing for citizens and businesses and groups to find the resources that they need. Although great strides have been taken in improving the quality of the water in Missouri, more improvements can be made. To do this, a new approach was needed to bring together the work on water quality and quality issues, quantity issues, to create and implement a plan that works. In order for it to work, it has to be coordinated on a more local level and led by those who are already working there. This will take a more holistic approach um, to and make the department's resources more accessible. What we mean by a, a holistic approach is you know, everybody that, that is interested working together and, uh, and looking at how everything affects the water uh, as a whole. So we came up with the Our Missouri Waters Initiative. Uh, it was, like Larry said, was initiated in uh, late 2011. It was an integrated watershed-based approach um, with the principles of local participation in watershed planning and decision-making, effective interagency collaboration, and targeting available resources. Overall, the initiative will take a coordinated approach um, to watershed management across the state. One of our goals is to integrate DNR's programs and services more effectively, which will help us maximize efficiencies, target resources, and achieve greater environmental benefit. In the past, our department's programs haven't always been coordinated. Our efforts weren't always in sync, and sometimes they were in conflict. This initiative was our attempt to fix this and to take a, a more broad approach to manage our water quality. Another goal is to work with partner agencies, local groups, and stakeholders to improve the planning process. So our goal is to build partnerships that include people who live and work in the watershed to plan and work together to benefit the watershed. Talking an awful lot about a watershed, so I probably ought to describe what a watershed is. Uh, um, I'm sure most of you already know that it is an area that drains to a common water body. It can be a few acres or thousands of square miles. All streams, rivers, wetlands, and lakes have a watershed that drains to it, and of course we all live in a watershed. Uh, this map here is the, uh, the largest group of watersheds, um, the, what we call the Huck 2, and I'll describe that here in just a minute. Um, we are, of course, in the Missouri River watershed at this time. So watershed-based management is a systematic or phased approach to watershed planning, including building partnerships, assessing and documenting concerns, uh, setting goals, finding solutions, and developing a plan to make those solutions happen. Um, the, uh, the watersheds, as I was starting to say, are uh, divided in a hierarchical system that the uh, USGS created, and they consist in hydrologic unit codes, or HUC, um, from two to 12 digits. And the smaller the digits, the larger the area. So that first map that I showed was all the two-digit watersheds, and they go down to 12-digit watersheds. Uh, there's 21 of the two digits. Uh, those 21 are divided into 221 four-digit subregions, and we work in the fourth uh, level, which is the eight-digit hydrologic unit code. Um, often referred to as a sub-basin. And these are all the, uh, those eight-digit hydrologic unit codes in the state. And you can see how they transcend boundaries. They don't really care about our political boundaries. So it's uh, necessary for us to work across those boundaries in this, in this initiative as well. There's uh, many benefits to, to taking an approach to water quality in this way. We can provide sufficient amounts of clean water required for safe drinking and for aquatic organisms and wildlife, um, provide clean water for human use and recreation, agriculture, and industrial processes. It will help reduce vulnerability to the impacts of climate and land use changes, um, create economic benefits such as reducing costs for supplying and treating water for human consumption and industrial uses, and also increase tourism. Uh, we talked last month about the uh, uh, paddling on the Missouri River. Um, that's a, a direct benefit of, of this type of a approach. 
Um, other benefits are uh, that we can focus on water quality goals as a whole in each area. Um, we can improve the basis for decisions, enhance the efficiency of our programs within the department, uh, improve coordination between our agency and other agencies, uh, increase public involvement. That's the main reason I'm here tonight. Uh, and um, have greater consistency and responsiveness within our department. Okay, so that's a mouthful, but how do we really do it? How do we get there? First, we had to change how the DNR did a few things internally. Uh, the, the first and most difficult so far has been synchronizing our permits. Um, so it used to be that permits were issued for five years as they were uh, uh, applied for. Um, and I'm talking mainly about the, the water pollution permits or stormwater permits. And uh, so they changed it so that every watershed would renew their permits at the same time. And that's going to take until 2018 to really come into uh, to effect um, for all those to, to cycle through. Uh, this helps because uh, our partners will know in advance when everybody's uh, permit will, will expire and, and renew. So we can look at the, the loads of nutrients or whatever uh, um, is in their permit is, is entering the water at one time. Uh, it gives us an opportunity to leverage our resources. Uh, we also had to uh, give me a job and add watershed coordinators. Um, we increased the coordination between our programs uh, within the, the department. So all those programs I listed before actually get together and, and kind of uh, work together to plan how we do things. Um, and we can evaluate the watershed at a, at a scale that's predefined, the, the HUC-8 level. And uh, finally, we instituted inspector cross-training where um, we have a lot of inspectors from the Kansas City region going to other regions to see how we all are, are doing our inspections, our reports, and, and what they're testing and looking for. So that increases the, uh, the effectiveness of, of all of our inspectors across the state. Um, externally, we, we had to make some, some more progress as well. So we are starting to create watershed groups, and I'll talk more about those in a little bit, uh, which will be used to help increase public participation in, in water, uh, watershed planning and, and events for education and uh, public outreach. So as we get going, we're collecting information about each watershed, which is what is the department doing in that watershed? Do we have, how many facilities do we have permitted? Uh, what do they produce? Um, how many drinking water facilities do we have? Uh, and then also find out what other people are doing in the watershed, whether it be um, other agencies, uh, such as the, the USGS or the Corps of Engineers, um, and, and other groups, such as the um, many of the groups that you guys belong to, the Missouri River Relief, and, and the, the list is, is long in this area. Um, so that's what we're working on now. I'm nearly done with that. Uh, uh, and I'm going to um, be producing a document that'll, that'll be used later on that kind of uh, is, is available to the public so people can, can see all of that. Um, the second thing that, uh, that we're working on is forming a watershed committee, uh, which will identify areas of concern, uh, set priorities for the watershed, what's needed in, in the eastern part or the western part uh, to improve the water quality there, um, uh, set those priorities, which should be done first, uh, make a plan, uh, this is how we're going to do it, uh, form partnerships, we're all going to work together, and uh, mentoring opportunities. So those areas that may not have a, a group that does cleanups on a regular basis can learn from those that, areas that do. And who do we want on the committee? Well, mainly anybody who's interested. Uh, residents and property owners, um, the regional planning commissions that are in the area, uh, other watershed groups, uh, um, whether they're volunteer or not, uh, other agencies, um, federal, state, and local, if they're interested. Um, 
professional and nonprofit associations, maybe the, the in one of our watersheds, uh, I believe the Home Builders Association or a similar organization was a part of it. Um, businesses that, uh, that impact the water and of course, department staff, uh, which is mainly me in this region. There may be others that participate as well. So we started this with uh, three pilot watersheds. Um, and the first is the Spring River watershed, which is here in the southwest part of the state. Um, the uh, Lower Grand in the north central and the big in the east central part of the state. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the big and how it went in their region. Um, in that watershed, but they all went a little differently because each watershed is unique. Um, we, we decided to use these watersheds because uh, they're a diverse group. Uh, they had differing opportunities that would uh, include projects where permitting grants and other tools could be used to improve the water quality and quantity uh, available in, the, in those areas. They all had their own unique set of problems. Uh, again, water quantity. Uh, legacy pollutants, um, especially in the southeast part of the state with lead and other metals. Uh, they all had uh, diverse communities, uh, some more affluent than others uh, um, with different priorities there. They had multiple uses from urban to agricultural, everything in between. Um, many of them were affected by non-point source pollutants, um, which is uh, not something that's regulated by the department. Uh, non-point source would be those uh, uh, things from, from runoff where there's not a defined area where uh, the, the water would leave a site and, uh, and also affected from channelization to improve uh, uh, either recreation or, or transportation. So in the Big River watershed, they, the committee included DNR staff, um, the three regional planning commissions, the Missouri Public Utilities Alliance, University of Missouri Extension staff, uh, representatives from the counties there, a member of the Big River Task Force, which was the main watershed group in the, um, in the region, and local health departments. Um, they started off uh, after a couple of meetings and decided to, to take a tour of the watershed. They, the tour included 62 uh, citizens and some agency representatives, started at the St. Joe State Park and took several stops along the river. Um, I believe that was on the river and also in cars between uh, stops or a bus, um, and ended back at the St. Joe State Park with a lunch uh, provided by the Cattlemen's Association who was supporting the, the uh, effort. Um, just, just a few pictures from some of the places that they went. Uh, water treatment plant. Um, I believe that's when they started at the, uh, at the state park. And near the end of their process of creating the plan, they decided to have a summit. All three watersheds had a summit. Um, some of them were finished creating their plan and starting to implement it, so the summit was more about that. In the Big River, um, it was more finalizing what people were looking for in a plan. Uh, it took place at the Mineral Area College in Park Hills. Uh, mainly people from the tour attended and, uh, and a few others that were part of the committee. Um, they, they broke it up into eight tables and each table had its own discussion topic. Uh, those were infrastructure for wastewater and drinking water, erosion, lead and lead legacy, recreation, conservation practices, natural resource damages, uh, economic impact and development, and stormwater. And their discussions uh, uh, helped finalize the, the plan for how they were gonna handle those issues in, in the big river watershed. Um, after those were done, uh, they, the department evaluated that process to, to decide how well it was, uh, was implemented. And um, a few tweaks later, we, we uh, rolled out statewide. So we, in this year, we decided to include the Salt River Basin, uh, which is actually two Huck 8 watersheds, the Merrimack Basin, which included the Big River and the Merrimack River watersheds, um, 
the Missouri River corridor, which is four different uh, Huckate watersheds, and um, the Sac Niangua and the Upper Missouri Cape Girardeau Huckate watersheds. Um, the two that are in the Kansas City region that I uh, will be most involved with are the Independent Sugar, which is this area here, and the Lower Missouri Crooked here. This is, I know it's a busy map, it's, but it's the best one that I have of the Lower Missouri Crooked. Um, there's a lot going on here, starting in Kansas City and actually into Kansas some, uh, and going all the way past Brunswick uh, into uh, Cheriton County. Um, so that's a large area that we're looking at here. Uh, I know that there's, there's groups already working on the Blue River, the Little Blue River. Some of you are involved with those. Um, so you know, I'm looking for input from those groups as well. Uh, the, just for reference, the, the streams and rivers highlighted in red are those that are on the uh, 303D list as impaired um, for one reason or another. Um, the 303D list is, is the state's list that's submitted to the EPA of, of um, waters that have some sort of an impairment. And uh, if you want more information, I have that afterwards on those. Um, so you can see that in this watershed, there's, there's a lot of agricultural land. There's, uh, of course, Kansas City and a lot of suburban cities that all have an impact on these, on these waters. The uh, Independent Sugar, which is not in Independence or Sugar Creek, um, I'm not really sure where the name comes from, uh, but uh, it, it basically flows from Savannah north of St. Joe down to Kansas City. Um, there is the Missouri River is the, uh, the main uh, water body that's on the 303D list, and then uh, there's a Line Creek and Weatherby Lake are also on that list. Um, so these are some large areas, and obviously this has a lot more than half in Kansas, so uh, there'll be some cross-state work there, uh, cross-state boundary work there uh, to, to implement a plan. And so I, I have a few goals for this. Uh, first of all, I need to create a working knowledge base of what's going on there. So I've spent a lot of time trying to uh, uh, do some research on what's, what, what events are happening out there. Um, what, uh, what groups are working on, on uh, improving the water quality? What, what are they doing? Um, how can I help? And also what businesses are hold permits and, and all of that. Like I said, I'm uh, creating a, a document that summarizes all of that. I'm also working to develop uh, relationships with local leaders and landowners and watershed groups and other government agencies that uh, are doing similar work in the area. Um, I'll be working to facilitate the watershed group or watershed committee meetings, um, developing and distributing outreach materials. I have a pamphlet here about our Missouri waters. It's a little dated. It's more about the pilot watersheds, but it gives you a good idea of what we're doing. If you want more information, that's available uh, after I'm done. Um, and I'm working on others. Uh, I also uh, uh, administer the Facebook page, uh, which I'll show you the link there in just a minute. Um, and I'm helping uh, people who aren't familiar with DNR and how we work uh, find resources within our agency and, and, and other agencies. And uh, I, again, one of the, my favorite parts of the job is to participate in the events, the cleanups and uh, watershed fairs and, and all of that, that that goes on in the region. Um, what can you do to help? Uh, well, by coming here and being interested, you already are, for one. Uh, also, attending events such as uh, cleanups and, and, and watershed fairs, uh, bringing your kids and families and, and helping to uh, uh, educate others on, on how uh, a watershed works and, and what affects a watershed uh, is, is a big part of it. Um, if you want to get more information from us, you can contact me. Uh, which would also be helpful to let me know about events because I don't find them all. Um, and then if you want to find out about other events that you may not know about, I'm, I'm happy to help with those. Uh, a lot of those will be put on the Facebook page. Um, and you can also sign up for our email group, which at today the, the, the link to sign up wasn't working right. So you can send me an email and I'll make sure you get on the email list. 
And it basically is the same thing that goes on the Facebook page. Um, so that's about it. Uh, again, here's the, the Facebook link, um, which I'm sure we can get to you electronically if you want an email with that. Uh, the website that talks a little bit more about what I've already said. Um, or you can contact me through those means. Uh, any questions?